and I just flew out so I could frame the shot that I wanted to take. Of course, I could point the camera any way I want to. I'm gonna try to move not too fast because it makes everybody sick, I think, on such a big now, screen. After we did 200 pips of Doom. Yeah. I oh, I good. see. Oh, everybody's warmed up. <laughs> They're all warmed up. Sweet. So this is okay? <laughs> all right. It's a pretty nice scene. But yeah, so we're gonna take uh, a high resolution picture here just to kind of give you a sense for how high the resolution can be. So as I showed yesterday, you know, you simply move here to high resolution and then you have the multiplier. Now, I'm not gonna set the multiplier really high here because it's gonna take some time, but we've already pre-made the shot. We did that earlier today. This is just kind of showing you what the process is like. And um, if we switch to demo uh, B machine, we can actually see the high resolution picture. And there we have that. And you can see that we took a picture with a multiplier of 24. So it's uh, 46,000 pixels wide and almost 26,000 pixels tall. And uh, to give you a sense of what that means, let's zoom in on uh, the lower level there and just select the little section and uh, see. How cool is that? Yeah, and and yeah, we, we need you know 4K monitors, whatever. We need a 46K monitor. Yeah, 46K monitor. And so, uh, but this was actually kind of interesting because we see that we can almost read what's on that uh, paper lying on the floor. So we kind of put, uh, we went into CSI mode, and and but the problem here is the camera wasn't oriented correctly, so we could read it. So we took another shot with high resolution. And this is actually what we found. <laughs> so the technology actually can be useful to uncover things in games that you didn't know were there. <laughs> and now let's uh, switch back to a uh, demo A machine. And so, um, and we can of course take, you know, this, for instance, this setup here is great for a 360. So I'm gonna just generate one of those. How's that? Let's see if we can't find that here on my hard drive. Yes. Here it is. And so we didn't show you guys yesterday what a 360 looks like. We did 360 stereo. So here's a 360 um, of you where I was. And that's, that's essentially an unwrapped yeah. echo rectangular projection yes. onto a planar projection, which I'll actually walk through how that works. But that's what an unwrapped sphere uh, essentially looks like. Yep, that's exactly what it's it is. It's a nice setting though, and, and you know, so I want to capture the full environment here. And um, similarly to what we did before, I just adjust the capture type. And in this case, I could just go to 360, so it's not stereo. And then I simply trigger the snap, and that was it. And then I go to uh, my screenshots folder, and in there, we will have the result. And that's, that's what that looks like. Now, what you'll notice in this particular capture is that you're maybe not seeing so much of this distortion, and that's just because at the poles, so at the top and the bottom, it just happens to be very little detail in this particular environment. So that's why this looks actually more like a typical panorama, but this is a full 360. Cool. Here we go, picture yeah. of Brooklyn See? Bridge, Brooklyn Bridge. Bridge. Yeah. So grab a picture. Let's uh, put some effects on. Oh yeah, make it here's pretty. A, here's an Instagram effect like called Momo. Yeah. Pretty extreme, but you know, it looks good. Get a, can you get a little camera roll in there? Yeah, of get arts, Get artsy on Any, it. Anything, anything for you, Tony. Oh, excellent. See? You the man. Look at that, it's beautiful. And? And, uh, and snap, done. Um, okay. So, and of course, I mean, we have, for some hop back effects, we have a lot of different settings, uh, you know, which allows you to tweak the effect to your heart's content at a vignette, maybe and brighten it up a little bit. You know, there are, yeah, there's a lot so of options. This is actually an example of a game that the developer is excited about Ansel, but they, uh, they provide, I'll call it some limits. Yeah. Um, some games are gonna have a free roaming, unlimited camera, go anywhere, do anything, take a picture of anything, stop time, whatever. Um, some games aren't. Right? Some games are real-time multiplayer games, and it's a little bit hard for any individual to be able to stop time for the whole universe. That becomes a little bit of a complicated thing to work out. Um, and of course, some games don't want a free-roaming camera for potential you know, fairness reasons or player reasons and stuff like that. So in this, this is a case where they provide input to our API. We respect those limits. We provide the flexibility to take the, the shots and the, the post-processing and super high resolution, all that good stuff. 
while not having to cross any boundaries into, oh, are you cheating or are you giving someone an unfair advantage or whatever. So that's the great thing. It's a partnership with the game developers. You don't have to like sneak anything by them. Pretty cool.